Good morning. I bring greetings from India, and I'm very pleased to be here. I must thank uh, Mr. Bonini, your firm, and COA for organizing this excellent seminar. It's very cold outside, but the strength of the people in here, so many people, makes it so warm, and I feel so welcome here. I will be talking about India, but let me thank Mr. Goldstein for the excellent rendition he made, a very good summary of what is happening in the BRIC countries, and I fully agree with him. I am going to cover certain very important aspects about uh, how to have your technology being transferred into India for particular products, and how Indian companies are transferring technologies outside India to be protected, and thereafter I will be covering aspects as to how your products can be protected in India and what are the best ways to protect them. When it comes to the transfer of technology, there have been several areas where India and other countries have collaborated. The most important areas where the collaboration has taken place is in the field of information technology, in the, in the area of automobile engineering, where companies from India have been doing exceedingly well. There are areas where India was thought was lagging behind, particularly in the field of automotive engineering. But the way Indian companies have come up in the field of automobile engineering and information technology is an example for everybody all over the world to realize. We all know the examples of information technology. India was, when it was being considered as a developing country, and now I'm glad that Mr. Goldstein calls it as already a developed country, the information technology area developed in the last few decades, and now India exports more software than any other country in the world. And there are still no limits as to the kind of collaborations Indian companies are entering into as far as software or information technology is concerned. The same applies for pharmaceuticals. India has pharmaceutical companies which are one of the biggest in the world. And to give you just a simple example, India has close to around 12,000 generic pharmaceutical companies, 12,000 generic pharmaceutical companies. Now these were all generic companies doing reverse engineering and coming up with a copy molecules or a copy drugs. Now suddenly these companies have started realizing the importance of doing research and development and in the process have started coming up with new molecules. And you, every year you read the newspaper, every day when you see one, you'll find that there are Indian companies buying out European and American companies. So it is all again becoming international. When it comes to transfer of technology from India to other countries, there is besides pharma, IT, and automobile sector, the new sector which is coming up is in the service sector. And the service sector does not restrict itself only to software, but also to providing services relating to accountancy, relating to legal services, which the Indian companies are providing. The advantage India has over perhaps other countries is the English language. And most of the Indians speak excellent English. And this has an edge over other developing economies. I will not say that China lags behind in this respect or, for example, Brazil lags behind in this respect. But if you speak to any Indian, you realize the English they speak. And it's a very high quality English. And every education the Indian people have is in India. But still, this goes a long way when it amounts to outsourcing. When any technology, any legal process, or any opinion matter, let it be from the technology area or the legal side, is sent to India. Now, the Indian companies have come up who are outsourcing these technologies. And this is a big generation of uh, business, of growth in economy. Let me share with you, new, near New Delhi, there, are a, there is a city known as Gurgaon, 
which you just mentioned you had visited. Near Madras, a big city, there is a city called Bangalore. And they are all surviving for the reason there is so much of a transfer of technology coming into India. And that has happened because of the English language and also because of the American and European companies relying on the Indian strength of law as well as the English language. When it comes to the strategy of protecting your intellectual property rights in India, you have to first have a particular liking, a particular desire for a particular country. If you already have a business model and that business model is for a country like India, you have to have a strategy on the basis of which you are going to approach the Indian country. India provides all the services when it relates to intellectual property. And these services include all the matters relating to trademarks, copyrights, patents, designs, geographical indicators, and integrated circuits. You have to know the market if you realize that India is a market of your choice. India is a market where you are eventually going to export your products. The first and the most important requirement of you as an Italian or a European company is to find out who are your competitors in India. This requires a market study, a market analysis. The moment you find out about your competitors in India, the second and the most important requirement is to find out how your competitors in the Indian market have developed a strategy and how they have been successful in India. Having this kind of a background, the third requirement and the most in, in, uh, important requirement is to have a subsidiary or a local office in India which can monitor, which can find out what are the areas where your company, where your company needs to channelize its resources, its energy. The moment you have an Indian subsidiary, thereafter you should initiate proceedings to protect your intellectual property rights. A market study gives you a fair amount of idea what are the economic developments in a particular area. For example, it could be packaging. What are the requirements of the Indian people, Indian general public for packaging? And thereafter, you could have a strategy. The laws in India are very well drafted. And when it comes to protection of your name, your brand name, we have a trademark act, which is running as early as 1956. We have a patent act, which is there in India since the year 1911. So it's unlike a country, I'm sorry to again take the example of China, the revolution of IP, intellectual property in China, started just two decades ago. But when I talk about India, we have had this act and the enactments since the year 1911. As we all know, India was a British colony. So the impact of the Britishers on India has been very positive and the laws are in place. The enforcement is very strong in India. There have been incidences where people at large have been thinking that perhaps India is not very good in enforcement. But recently, let me share with you, there have been case laws coming out from the New Delhi High Court, from the Chennai and the Mumbai High Courts, where the orders have been in favor of foreign companies. So it's not that the Indian courts only favor the Indian companies. They go on the merit of the case. And this is also a very positive sign for the European companies, for the you all as Italian companies who are thinking of India as the future. With the middle class in India, as Mr. Goldstein said, running into more than 300 million people, that's more than the population or close to the population of USA. And a young generation, a young generation in the age group of 20 to 30 years, running to close to 150 million. This is the future. And this is the future for the whole world. And like it has been said, uh, the driving engine for the world economy. I only encourage you to have another look 
at your business strategy for India because in the years to come with the laws in place in India and the economy booming, the manufacturing sector doing the very best and the recession which is affecting the whole of the world, not ex exactly affecting India in the way it is affecting the whole world. The future belongs to countries like India, China, Russia and of course Brazil. Have another look at your strategy for uh, developing countries or already developed countries like the BRIC countries and with the laws in force I'm sure you will have a strategy in place for your future development. I'll just share a little bit about our firm in India which is based in New Delhi. We are a green office being a law firm we do not have any paper we are a paperless system and we have everything as per electronically managed. We are being governed by ideas. The area of intellectual property where I practice is governed by ideas. And for ideas, you need good people, good engineers who can create a product out of an idea. And if you have a good product which has come out from a good idea, you need a good attorney. You need a good lawyer. Only then can your ideas be protected. So that's why I say you need good ideas and a good and sound idea need a good advocate and also a good patent attorney to protect that. And we strive very hard to give you protection for your good ideas. These are the three main people in our firm, the three main partners, including me. My senior partner is like is my father. Uh, and it is a family firm and uh, the third lady standing next to my father is my wife. So three people from the family, we run the firm. We handle patents, trademarks, designs, copyright, litigation, media and entertainment laws and we also handle investigative services through in-house private investigators. These are our various areas of specialization including very high technologies such as satellite technology or purification technology. We also handle mechanical and electrical work, all gamuts, gamuts of technologies. We have different departments and members in the electrical mechanical field, all patent attorneys. We have chemical team, a chemist, chemists and pharmacologists. And then we have litigators who litigate in the court of law. We are members of various organizations, international bodies such as AIPLA, APAA, AIPPI, INTA, LES, FICP, GALA and CII. This is uh, our senior partner. He is, as, he is something like 76 years old and a qualified mechanical and electrical engineer. He has two degrees and he is a patent attorney. I am a chemist and I am also a lawyer so I have two degrees. And this is my partner who is an electrical engineer. This is our whole firm and I must thank you for giving me your attention and your time and I wish uh, this seminar a great success. Thank you.